We welcome all of you tonight. We're glad to be dwelling together in unity. Because that's where the Lord commanded the blessing. Amen. Now talk about a blessing. Even life forevermore. <laughs> this will be our 76th <coughs> exposition of Genesis. Drawing to a Conclusion, tonight the famine in Egypt and Canaan reaches its apex, <clears throat> and the ordinary way of sustaining life will be obviated. There will have to be some creative way to sustain life. In the 47th chapter, verse 13 through 26, <clears throat> and there was no bread in all the land, for the famine was very sore, so that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of, Can of Egypt and in, the, and in the land of Canaan for the corn which, which they bought. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. And when the money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, Give us bread. Why should we die in thy presence? For the money faileth. And Joseph said, Give your cattle. I will give you for your cattle, if money fail. And they brought their cattle unto Joseph, and Joseph gave them bread in exchange for horses, and for flocks, and for the cattle of the herds, and for the asses. And he fed them with bread for all their cattle for that year. When that year was ended, they came unto him the second year and said unto him, We will not hide it from my Lord now our, that our money is spent, my Lord. Also hath our herds of cattle. There is not aught left in the sight of my Lord but our bodies and our lands. Wherefore shall we die before thine eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land for bread, and we and our land will be servants unto Pharaoh. And give us seed that we may live and not die, that the land be not desolate. That's interesting there, isn't it? <laughs> You'd be in, an empty land, and that, it, it didn't want to have an empty land. And Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh, for the Egyptians sold every man his field because the famine prevailed over them. So the land became Pharaoh's. As for the people, he removed them to cities from one end of the borders of Egypt even to the other end thereof. Only the land of the priests bought he not, for the priests had a portion assigned them of Pharaoh and did not eat their portion, and did eat their portion which Pharaoh gave them, wherefore they sold not their lands. Then Joseph said unto the people, Behold, I have bought you this day and your land for Pharaoh. Lo, here is seed for you, and ye shall sow the land. And it shall come to pass in the increase that ye shall give the fifth part unto Pharaoh, and four parts shall be your own. For seed of the field, for your food, and for them of your households, and for food for your little ones. They said, Thou hast saved our lives. Let us find grace in the sight of my Lord, and we will be Pharaoh's servants. And Joseph made it a law over the land of Egypt unto this day that Pharaoh should have the fifth part, except the land of the priests only, 
which became not Pharaoh's. <clears throat> now, why is it that uh, we have this history of Genesis? I know that a lot of professed Christians don't think it's really that important, so they don't hardly know anything about it. Yeah. Why do? Why did? Why do we have it? It's understood that Moses wrote the book. Has concluded from statements like Moses and the prophets, mm -hmm. the law of Moses and the prophets, and in the Psalms. It's generally understood that the law, in, as used there, is Genesis through Deuteronomy. Now, at this point in Genesis, certain things have happened. Remember, we've, God's acquainting us with himself. And he's establishing some pillars of, that will hold up sound reasoning. To, the, to this point in Genesis, we've read of the creation of the heavens and the earth. We've read about the fall of man. You can't think now about humanity or the world or life without... These considerations. We read of the fall of man. We read of the flood, a record of the effect of sin upon God, just in case anyone has any questions about it. We read about, read about the cessation of the building at Shinar, which shows how God feels about people who try to make a name for themselves. We read about the calling and the life of Abraham, a considerable amount of text devoted to that. We read about the events related to Isaac and to Ishmael, considerable time devoted to that. The events related to Jacob and Esau, a considerable part to that. The events of Joseph's life is quite lengthy. And now we're reading about the migration of Jacob's household to Egypt. Now, why was Moses all these occurred a long time before Moses. Long, long, long time before Moses. What? About two and a half millennia. 2,500 years plus before Moses. These happened. Why did, why did God reveal that to Moses? Why didn't he just leave this unsaid? Why did he just leave it obscure? No one could have known these things by observation and human conclusion. None of those things I just told you, no one had ever known about those things if God didn't make it known. Now the question is why? Amen. Why did God do that? Because this is the book of beginnings yeah. or origins and they're all traced back to God. Iniquity is all traced back to Satan. It accounts for the beginning of everything that can be seen. The origin of man, yeah. the origin of marriage, the origin of sin. It gives us an arrested example of the wrath of God. It confirms that those chosen by God are changed by their involvement with him. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph, they didn't live the same after they came in contact with God. They did not, I'm emphatic about this, they did not live the same way. So people that say you do, they've just betrayed themselves. This book is in order to establish the foundation of proper thought. And if you don't know these things, you can't think right. Your thinking will become skewed. The idea of a savior is being seen in Noah. Mm -hmm. He introduced that a whole family was saved because of one man. Yeah. Being saved is also seen in Abraham's defeat of kings that were greater and mightier than he was. Yeah. Joseph, is, the idea of being saved is seen in Joseph also, who was exalted in Egypt <laughs> and saved the people from being consumed by a seven-year famine, five years of which they were in mm -hmm. Egypt. So in Genesis, we're introduced to the blessing, to God blessing yep. people. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't know nothing about this if, God, if this wasn't for this book. Mm 
could be, what does bless mean? Yeah. Let's tell people around what bless means. Yeah. He blessed in creation Adam and Eve. It says he blessed them. Genesis 9 1 says he blessed Noah. Genesis 24 1 says he blessed Abraham. In the promises to Abraham, he promised to bless his seed. He promised to bless the whole world. He blessed Isaac, Genesis 25, 11. The blessing of the Lord can be experienced because of someone else. He told Isaac, because of your father. He blessed Jacob. And the blessing of the Lord could be perceived. Laban said, oh, I can see. I can see the Lord's blessed you. Uh, someone once said I think it was Spurgeon Charles Haddon Spurgeon the main thing is to get a blessing yeah. see the concept of blessing here he's teaching you what happened when he blessed Abraham well things weren't the same I tell you that yeah. when he blessed Noah what happened well it wasn't the same so there it became apparent that they, his blessing brought them some kind of advantage. That's right. Amen. Now, in regard to the purpose of God, the book of Genesis establishes he does not think about everybody the same way. Now, this uh, has kind of been lost in our generation. He does not think about everyone in the same way way. Everyone does not have an equal opportunity yeah. to be used by God. Mm -hmm. I mean, it may sound fashionable to say everyone has a chance. No, it's just, what do you have to do? You have to close your Bible or be ignorant about it. Yeah, right. mm. Abel and his sacrifice were received. Cain and his sacrifice were not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God, see this? Teach us something about God. Seth was chosen over all the other sons of Adam. For 800 years, he begat sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. Out of the whole, who knows how many, maybe, who knows how many it was. So don't wait to estimate. Begetting children for 800 years. Mm -hmm. Think how the population of the U.S. has grown in just a few hundred years it's yeah, been right. here. No, nothing like 800 years. So God chose Seth to start that all off. God, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. The world was filled with people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was everybody, every individual ungodly. I don't know, there was some that Jesus preached to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They apparently weren't in that category, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. See, he's, he's, God is dis, he's particular about who he deals with. Shem was chosen over the other two sons of Noah. Abraham was chosen rather than one of his brothers, Nahor and Haran. Isaac was chosen rather than Ishmael. Jacob was chosen rather than Esau. Joseph was chosen rather than his 11 brothers. Judah was chosen as the progenitor of the Mess Messianic lineage. Yeah. <laughs> this is all made known in Genesis. So someone comes along and says, I don't believe God chooses. <laughs> well, the Lord should like strike them dumb. Yeah, that's right. They should not have a right to speak. Mm -hmm. yeah. now, some people, he has done that. Mm -hmm. yeah. He did to Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist. He said, that's it. Yeah. You're going to have to keep silence now until this happens. And then when you speak, you'll have something to say. Yeah, woe to that person who is brash enough to develop a view of God that contradicts Amen. or is at variance with his Amen. revelation. So God's introduced us to him, to himself. And whenever we talk about God, we want to take great care, great care, not misrepresent him, because he's gone to great length to identify what he, who he is and what he's like and what he's not like. Actually, a person who's not familiar with Scripture has got no right to comment on God. Yeah. Amen. Just let him keep 
keep silent. Let all the earth keep silence. Mm -hmm. Don't anybody talk about God unless they know what they're talking about. <laughs> now our text says that there was no bread in all the land, for the famine is very sore, so that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. All supplies of the wealthy, they, they were non-existent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was nobody like wealthy. Yeah. All the land fainted, Egypt and Canaan, all the land fainted. Now what God's demonstrating here, during this famine, Joseph nourished his father and his brethren and all his father's household with bread according to their families. So this proves what the psalmist said, that God can keep them alive in famine. Yes, All right, so that yes. he shows you this is the yeah, this is the truth. God can keep you alive in famine. He kept Elijah alive in the famine. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That was being confirmed by the sustaining of Jacob and his family because you they couldn't be a sustained. If Joseph didn't sustain them, they, they couldn't be sustained. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> The way it's written, it seems to indicate that they didn't just barely survive. The That's right. Uh -huh. that That's when right. it talks about nourishing them, they were they were taken care of well. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now, when Jesus entered the world, there was a famine of you know, the hearing of the words of God in the world. The world was reeling under the sway of sin. It was a famine, just spiritual famine, just like the famine of Egypt and Canaan. Jesus came to settle the matter of sin which caused the famine mm -hmm. and confirmed to the insightful that full provision would be made for those that trusted in him. Amen. See what, from Adam to Noah, there was like a famine. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Then from, from Noah to Abraham, that was like a famine. Mm -hmm. Then from Abraham to Joseph, that was like a famine. And from Joseph to Moses, that was like a famine. Mm -hmm. But you notice that God didn't do anything until the end of the famine. It's at the end of the famine. Mm -hmm. And the famine was imposed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I'm showing you here that this, if you take divine intervention out of the picture, yeah. you just have one big long famine. Yeah. 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 The only thing that broke the famine uh -huh. was the intervention of God. Yeah. It wasn't asked for, now you'll notice carefully, Nobody in Noah's time was praying, Lord, send, come to us, Lord. See, they weren't calling on the name of the Lord like that during that period. From Noah to Abraham, there weren't a lot of prayers about, teach us about yourself and this sort of thing. God did this at his discretion at the appropriate time mm -hmm. to prove that he's the governor. He's the managing things. Now, it says that the, the land of Canaan and the uh, land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan. Mm -hmm. uh, Egypt and Canaan are particularly mentioned. See, they weren't the only no nations affected by this famine. Mm -hmm. But only they are mentioned because these are the two nations God is working in. Mm -hmm. God's working with these two nations, so he mentions them. Actually, <laughs> I gave you some documentation here. There's people who research this that there was a global famine mm -hmm. about this time, which is about 1700 BC. Mm -hmm. Africa reports that archaeologists and students of history report that at this year, 1700 BC, which is about this time, there was a massive famine in Africa. Europe experienced the same thing in that same year. Asia experienced the same thing, and North and South America experienced the same thing. At this time, 
he pretty well substantiated this, mm -hmm. that this was a global famine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But God just fastened on Egypt yeah. and Canaan. Uh -huh. Until the, uh, this was the place where God's people would be nourished. That's why he mentions Canaan. That, that drove, they had to leave. When there wasn't any food in Canaan, they had to leave. Amen. Yeah. There's a principle now you want to pick. <laughs> you want to pick up on this. Yeah. Amen. If you're where there isn't any food, you got to leave. Yeah. Amen. You can't be sustained under famine. That's right. Here's a lot of these famines in the country. Now, things to be learned from, uh, from this is it that it takes effort to be sustained in a spiritual famine. Amen. This just does. It just didn't happen to these in the physical famine. It just didn't happen. It was just, just sustained. I mean, it wasn't quite like that. Tremendous inconvenience was associated with being sustained. So you learn this, that during a spiritual famine, it can be very exhausting. Joseph was not running a relief campaign. That's right. Yeah. It's interesting that you brought up that this was a global famine. Because, you know, if, if what they say is true, then it, it also demonstrates that there really is no other place anywhere to, for provision. Mm -hmm. It was it was God and God's people, and that's the way the church is in the world. Mm -hmm. The whole world lies that's right. in in wickedness and benightedness, and it doesn't make any difference where you go, what continent you're on. Uh -huh. You have to go where God's working with His people that's right. in order to get what you need. Amen. Amen. There is no other place. Amen. They couldn't have sailed over to another continent and gotten it. Yeah, that's right. There, there was no place. Mm -hmm. No, that's right. Amen. <laughs> and Joseph didn't uh, travel out to the various countries and bring food. They had to come in. That's right. There's a cost involved with receiving nourishment from the Lord. Amen. You know that church at Laodicea got lukewarm. He says, "Sale. You got to do. Got to buy. Yeah, right. You got to buy. I get. I got some stuff for you, but you got to buy it." Jesus said to the woman, sell what you have. Sell what you have. You want what I have? Sell what you have. Hmm? You want me to give you for my plenitude? Get shit of the stuff that's holding you back. Amen, that's right. Amen. But see, this is serious, serious business. Just as those were starving, just as they had to make their way to Jesus, so those who hunger and thirst after righteous, yeah. righteousness have to make their way to Christ. <laughs> they have to get to him. It was our responsibility to get him to them. <laughs> God said it's their responsibility to get to him. Yeah, amen. Amen. Yes. That's what he ordained. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> that doesn't mean we don't go to him. That doesn't mean that. But I'm, the responsibility is laid on the person who needs him. Yeah. Uh -huh. amen. <laughs> Do not doubt that many people died for some reason because they didn't get to Joseph. A lot of people die because they don't get to Jesus. They don't make it. <coughs> and what is supplied by God must be obtained by men at their inconvenience. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be inconvenient for God. Yeah. Inconvenient means you depart from the norm. Yes. This isn't <laughs> salvation. Isn't a system whereby God departed from being God for a while. That's, right. That's not what it is. The departure has to be us, yes. not him. Those who insist on an easy and convenient way to be nourished, at the very best, they're going to be weak and faint. Mm -hmm. There's no easy path to glory. Amen. <clears throat> all right, now all the money's run out, hmm. and the famine is, famine is keeping in, is increasing. It's getting worse as it goes along. Maybe you think ordinary in a famine, the worst part be at the beginning, then it kind of taper off. No, this mounted with time. It got worse. Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, 
for the corn which they bought, Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. As I mentioned, we know there were more countries involved than Egypt and Canaan. It is written, and the famine is over the, all the face of the earth. And again it is written, Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians, and the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt, and all countries came to Egypt. to so see, it was, but God's working with Egypt and Canaan. So he just, out of his mercy, he supplied these other nations, but they weren't a point. That's right. yeah. They weren't a point. So yes, we admit, we admit that ungodly people do appear to be flourishing. They have their need, earthly need met. We admit that. Yeah. Uh -huh. But that's a so what. That's right. yeah. God out of his mercy is doing that, but that that's the only good thing you're going to get. Yeah, that's right. Yes. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whenever we, we think about, it, it really was a mercy to Egypt. Mm -hmm. The yeah. Egyptians yeah. were... were uh, in a very good position as far as the ungodly went. But now, God is demonstrating something here in their midst, in Joseph. And the fact that they turned from that was part of the condemnation, <coughs> raising them up and showing that their heart toward Him <coughs> and making their condemnation just. But also you see, whenever, whenever God does something, He's... He's usually, like on this kind of circumstance, not like somebody that's wicked and he's judging it, not like the mm. Pharaoh that had forgotten Joseph, but the people in general. He used them to collect all this food, to grow it and collect it. It was yeah. their labor. And it's like he gave them wages for their labor. That's right. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Now the text says that he gathered up all the money. Mm -hmm. It was found in the land of Egypt. Now, and in the land, and in the land of Kenya. See how he makes this point yeah. again. Now, it could be that he gathered all the money as he sold it together. But I don't think that's what he's talking about. He kept gathering the money till it ran out. That's yeah. that's the idea. Yeah. All of it. He had to have before he could open, before he could really sustain the people. He had to have everything they had. They couldn't keep any money for themselves. Mm -hmm. No bank accounts, yeah. no savings accounts, no retirement plan. Mm -hmm. Gathered up all the money. We know there was no more money in Canaan either. See, mm -hmm. what, no more, no, no more money in Egypt, mm -hmm. no more money in Canaan. They could not expand themselves. Mm -hmm. They couldn't make themselves have money. They just. You're in a helpless state. When they saw this, they moved to Egypt. People in Canaan. And Joseph, he brought all the money to Pharaoh's house. Because he was under Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Pharaoh was the only living person that wasn't under, as far as the kingdom of Egypt was concerned, that wasn't under Joseph. Yeah. He brought it out. So he's working for Pharaoh. He wasn't yeah. working for himself. Yeah. He wasn't salting away a nice... Like the ministers do today, the mm -hmm. mega church ministers, they salt this away. Uh -huh. They're multimillionaires and all this. Uh -huh. This is the man of God here, see. That's the right. difference is this is the man of God yeah. here. Uh -huh. See, he wasn't salting it away for himself. Uh -huh. This was a kingly prerogative mm -hmm. to do this. Now there's a broader view of this that came to me. Uh -huh. Now all the nations... They get they the famine waxed sore and they were it weakened. Yes. Mm. Now these nations in Canaan, remember, mm -hmm. everything ran out in Canaan. Got weaker. This weakened those nations, yeah. so they wouldn't be at full strength when Israel came in several hundred years later. Yeah. You see, the, <laughs> it took them centuries to rec recover yeah. from this famine. But he weakened the nations mm -hmm. in Canaan. Yeah whose place Israel was going to take. Amen. Oh, boy, that's a pleasant yeah. thing to see. And he brought the money to Pharaoh. You know, when Jesus, uh, they questioned Jesus about paying tribute to Caesar, he said, well, bring me a coin. Who's, whose picture's on that? 
It says Caesar's. Give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Give to God what belongs to God. What belongs to God? You. You got his image. Amen. Caesar's image is on the coin. God's image is on you. Yes. Give yourself right. to God. Mm -hmm. Render to Caesar what belongs to him. So you take out any form of money you got. It'll say United States of America on that. Uh -huh. That belongs to them. The only reason you got any is God's just been merciful to you because it really belongs to them. Mm -hmm. You're not the source. That's right. It's a hard thing for see uh, people in democracy. It's a, it's, uh -huh. it's a bit of a hard pill to swallow, but that's the way it is. Yes. And the king had a right to do this. You remember when Israel wanted a king, mm -hmm. Samuel told him what a king would do. Yes. This wasn't necessarily an evil thing. This is what a king would do. He said, he will take your fields and your vineyards and your olive yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servants. And he will take the tenth of your seed and of your vineyards and give to his officers and to his servants. And he will take your men servants and your maid servants and your goodliest young men and your asses and put them to his work. That's what a king does. So I don't think that's right. That's what a king does. You can't be thinking that's not right when you're going to talk about now Jesus being king. You can't be thinking this isn't Amen. right. Amen. This is right under a kingship. Some kings were merciful, so they helped the people. This doctrine concerned the doctrine of Paul, for instance, concerns civil authority. He said, give honor to whom honor is due, and so forth. It was civil authority. He said, render to them their dues and tribute to whom tribute's due. Pay your taxes. Mm -hmm. Don't be griping about your taxes. Yeah. Pay them. Yeah. There's a flat 20% to everybody in Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You say, well, I don't think it, you got no right to think in this area. Yeah, that's right. God hasn't given you the right to diagnose in this area. It'll make you not have an appreciation for Jesus if you think like that. Amen. You're living under a government, a government, they could take everything you got. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't forget that. Yeah. I'm establishing this is a type of the heavenly kingdom. Mm -hmm. And that it's a divinely intentional type. The psalmist wrote these words. Give unto the Lord the glory, do his name, bring an offering. That's what he said. That's what he said. Bring an offering and come into his courts. <laughs> Again, it's written in Revelation, on all the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory and honor into it. See? Just like all the money ended up Pharaoh's hand, all the glory's going to end up Amen. God's hand. The place the kings are going to bring it is specified in Revelation 21, 10, and 11. Mm -hmm. He carried me away in the spirit to a high and great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was likened to a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. That's where the kings brought their glory. Amen. Yeah. Uh -huh. wow. Now, as I say, there's a type seen here. It's a sense in which Jesus is gathering all of the glory for the Father. Amen. As it is written, then, then cometh the end. God hasten the day when that comes. Then comes the end. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God. See, see how it parallels Joseph? Yeah. Delivered up the kingdom to God. Yeah. Even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule, all authority, and power. When all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the king, son also himself, be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. That's the way it's going to end up. Yeah. It's going to end up everything's going to go to God. Yeah. And Jesus is going to present the biggest mm -hmm. and best offering. Yeah. 
Behold, I and the children thou hast given me. Here, here we are. Now this is especially true in the, in the spirit about everything belonging to God. And the earth or anything in it, the earth or anything in it is not to be worshipped. Glory is not to go to it. The glory goes to God. Men cannot trust in the mammon of unrighteousness. The glory's got to go Amen. to God. Living is more important than having money. You can only procure what is needed spiritually by forfeiting some earthly advantage. You'll, if you haven't learned this yet, in due time, you will learn this. If you want to step up a notch in the kingdom, you got to step down a notch in the world. Amen. It's how it works now. You don't believe that? It's time, time will teach that to you. It'll teach you to it. Pretty soon some things to you won't seem important. This is how it works. You get closer to God, you say, Ooh, this, oh, this over here, this doesn't, this doesn't seem important. I'm going to lay that aside. Because that's the way the kingdom works. You want more from God, you got to settle for less from the world. That's the way it is. <coughs> Money cannot stop a famine from coming. And eventually it will be consumed during the famine. So you can't trust in what Jesus called uncertain riches. Anything temporal will eventually be depleted. Where it's a 401k or whatever. Mm -hmm. If it's temporal, it eventually will be depleted. Yeah. Now they said, give us bread. Why should we die in thy presence? They wanted uh, free bread. And see, they didn't think they didn't think there's any other way to get bread. Give us some bread. We want for nothing now. We don't we don't have any more money. They thought the only alternative was to have a giveaway campaign. There's so some people think this. Salvation is bestowed. It's not handed out like common things. Why should we die in your very presence? They say, well, that was a telling argument, wasn't it? The Amplified Bible says, why should we die before your very eyes, for we have no money left? What? They didn't say have mercy on us. They said give us. A... Mm -hmm. <laughs> they didn't say have mercy on us, Joseph. They didn't say it. They said give us, give us some bread. So how's, how does Joseph answer this? He's, we know he's a sympathetic man. He's a tender man. How's he going to answer this? Well, he said, give me your cattle. Yeah. And I'll give you for your cattle. That's if the money fails. Uh -huh. You got to spend all your money for bread before I'll sell you any for cattle. Yeah. You can't have cattle and money. Mm -hmm. It's cattle or money. Mm -hmm. So when the money, if you don't have any more, if it's gone, then I'll take some cattle, mm -hmm. your cattle. Actually, this was a blessing because mm -hmm. cattle had to have provender of food. Yeah. They didn't have any food. There was a famine. So now their cattle, Joseph would provide for their cattle. He'd take care of their cattle, and he'd take care of them. So their arrangement was so the cattle would be preserved. They couldn't preserve them. Amen. So get whatever you can't preserve, give it up, give it up, Amen. give it up. What you can't preserve, give it up. Now, as a principle to be seen here, as I mentioned, when, you want, when we want benefits from the Lord, It'll be at the expense of something. And that is between you and the Lord. But you will find this to be the case. You cannot, see, God demands that you love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You can't give any of those capacities to anyone or anything else. Yeah. I know this can happen. Your job can consume you. Now, God gave me grace in this. I, I do know what I'm talking about. You can have a responsible job and it not consume you. 
You can't give your heart, soul, mind, and strength to an employer. You cannot do that. You've got to give it to God and then serve God. To hit the manager will think you're serving him, but you're really you're serving, you're serving God. <clears throat> Whatever demands all of your heart, making no allowance for the mind to be basically submitted to God, is unlawful. Whatever demands all your soul, making no allowance for the mind to be basically submitted to God, that's unlawful. For some, this may seem like an impossible thing, but it's not. The New Covenant way of saying this is, whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. You got a job? Thank God you got a job. Amen. Thank Him for your job. Yes. Amen. Work for Him in your job. It will never bring dissat ultimate dissatisfaction That's to your right. employer. Uh -huh. Employers these days are miffed by Christian workers. Yeah. Now, I know what I'm talking about here. Yeah. Uh -huh. There's exceptions. I understand that, but they are exceptions. The church has not left a good impression on the work world. But it should. It should. Notice what they is included when he said they gave them their cattle for in payment. Notice what was included. They had horses. They were used for riding, for horsemen, drawing chariots. They had flocks of sheep. They had herds of cattle. They had asses or donkeys that bore burdens and sometimes were ridden. See, under ordinary circumstances, horses, flocks, herds, asses, these were all necessary to the maintenance of life under ordinary circumstances. But this wasn't an ordinary. It's like God said, look, I want the generations after you to see how I can provide. I want them to see how great I am. So I'm going to make an example out of you. It's going to be inconvenient for you. You're going to get discouraged and disheartened for you. You're going to have to give up everything. It's not going to be pleasant. But I'm making a point mm -hmm. to the generations to come that I am a provider. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you wouldn't know much about that if this, these accounts weren't in Scripture. Yeah. Because of the famine, the need for their function greatly decreased <laughs> so some of the kind of luxuries of life you have now yeah, amen. there could come a time when they won't mean much uh -huh. yeah. like if all of a sudden the electrical grid goes out yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> this could have a big effect uh -huh. that happen so joseph he sold the cattle then when the year was ended remember when the, when they came Jacob and his sons came. Joseph said, this is two more years. There's two more years of the famine. So we just did the first year of the famine, all their cattle. They ran out and all their cattle for that first for that first of the two years that were left. It would be the sixth year of the famine. When the year was ended, they came to him the second year. That's the second year of the final two years. And said unto him, We will not hide from my Lord how that our money is spent. My Lord also hath our herds of cattle. There's not aught left in the sight of my Lord but our bodies and our lands. Wherefore shall we die before thine eyes, both we and our land? By us. Ah. By us and our land. And we'll be servants unto Pharaoh and Give us seed that we may live and not die, that the land be not desolate. Well, some people have never come to that point. They've never come to the point where they say to God, purchase us, mm -hmm. yeah. buy us. Yeah. We're willing to live for you. Yeah. We're willing. See, a lot of people never said this. Right. Yeah. A lot of church members have never said this. A lot of people who've been what they call baptized never have said this. Mm -hmm. They've never been willing to live for God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
They're sloppy disciples, uncomely to the name of Jesus, because they have not seen their situation right. Yeah, amen. So they're in this current year and final year of the famine. They said, look, we don't have anything left. Mm -hmm. All we've got is our land. We've got our land. There's no cattle or anything on it, but we got our land. Nothing's growing on it, but we got our land. And we got our ourselves. Here's what we're learning to do. Buy us. We'll be serve we'll be slaves. Yeah. We'll be Pharaoh's slaves. And you can have our land. We can't do anything. We can't do anything with our land right now. We can't do anything with it. So you and then we'll be your your servants. Now see. I personally indict. I wish I had a larger forum to do it in. But I indict preachers and teachers that haven't fed the flocks. These men are sinners yep. of the first rank. Yes, amen. They've created a famine. Yes. Amen. The people cannot be taught how to cease from sinning. Amen. You can't teach people how to stop That's sinning. Right. Right. People trying to do it, uh -huh. if you just do this, if you fast so often, if you just do that, yeah. you can't teach that. Right. Only God can stop the increase of sin. Mm -hmm. Those who seek to control sin with worldly wisdom, they're like shadow boxers. Mm -hmm. They're beating the air. Making a lot of noise and whiffing up a lot of air, but there's uh -huh. nothing substantial is taking place. Now, this is a picture of Babylon the Great. They will just not simply wear out the saints because they're, they're stronger. People will not grow weary of it and finally abandon it. They were fed up. The further and, and the longer it's operating, the worse it gets. That's spiritual Babylon. Yeah. It's getting worse. It's not tapering off. It's not tapering off. Right, yeah. Getting worse, worse, worse. There'll never be improvements in it. It's pointless to pray for Babylon to be improved. That's right. It isn't going to be improved. Uh -huh. God's against it. Not for it. It's rotten to the core, and it can't be improved. It's like the cattle's gone. The land can't grow anything. That's, what, that's the result of spiritual Babylon. Nothing can be sustained by it. Today especially is that you can't study your way out of this. That is if right. You're, if you're going to be brought out of it, then God has to be the one to do it. That's right. Mm-hmm. Amen. There's only our bodies and our lands. That's all we got. By us. Yeah. Oh, oh, God be praised when you come to that day. Yeah. You see, yeah. by us. Yeah. By us and our land. Why? Because they wanted to live. Yes. Mm -hmm. Starvation is a terrible way to die. Yeah. Terrible way to die. We want to live, so yeah. by us. We'll sell ourselves to you. Brother that, Caleb, yes. Um, that's why it says in uh, Romans 12. Speak up, our bodies, that's why it says in Romans 12 to give our bodies an acceptable sacrifice. Yeah, one living. That's living, one that God can work with. That's to right. To give ourselves. That's Amen. an investment of every person who comes into the kingdom. That's right. And uh, so we are giving of ourselves so God can write upon our hearts. And so we're no longer bound by tutors and governors, but we want to serve the living God. Yes, amen. <coughs> yeah, that was to believe it. Present your bodies. Mm -hmm. It's a formality. Yeah. That's a formality. That yeah. isn't done like informally, just... Uh -huh. That's a formal... That's right. Yes. ...offering. Uh-huh. Amen. Amen. 
That meant from that time forward, yes, they'd be living for the cause of Pharaoh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In Pharaoh's will, what they'd be doing, yeah, he'd be living for him. Mm -hmm. His desire, that be their desires, they'd defer to Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. This would all be in exchange for the privilege of remaining alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As uh, Isaac has already introduced, there's an exact parallel between this and spiritual life. In fact, a point is made of the fact mm -hmm. that Christ has purchased us. Yeah. Uh -huh. It says 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Uh -huh. What? That's another way. Are you that stupid? Yeah. That's a that's an uncultured way of saying it. Yeah. What? Know ye now that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have from God, and you are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen. See, you've been, you've been purchased. Again, the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood, <laughs> now, the purchase is also referred to as a redemption, yeah, yeah. a buying, right. buying back. You were not redeemed with corruptible things of silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. You are redeemed with the precious blood of Christ, Peter yeah. said. Then in the, in the glory, John heard these words. They sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God mm -hmm. by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Jesus purchased us for God, Amen. like Joseph purchased the yes. people yes. for Pharaoh. I suppose there are few statements of truth that are so contradicted in the modern church as the fact that Christians are not their own. All sectarianism, all church fights, all discontent, all rebellion is because people think they are their own. But they're not their own. You are not your own. You do not have a right to think just of yourself. You do not have a right to cook up things that in your own mind and ignore the mind of the Lord. You do not have that right. And whoever ignores that is a lawbreaker. He's a criminal. That's a criminal. In the kingdom of God, a person seeking their own will is a criminal. Then the land, the scripture says, he bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh, and the land became his. Because the famine prevailed over them. See, the... <laughs> They couldn't, they couldn't counter this famine. Yeah, right, yeah. I'm sure they had agricultural experts and things like this, but they could not contend with this famine. So we've got this situation of a spiritual famine. Uh -huh, yeah. And the psychologists and psychiatrists have stepped up and said, I think we can solve this. Mm -hmm. Let us work on it. Then the Christian counselors, they said, we can do it. And the Christian authors said, look, we'll write a book about it. We can, I think we can address this, but see, none of them have been able to do it. Right, if they had been able to do it, uh -huh. the famine would have been averted. Yes. Yeah. But they've not been able to do it. See, the famine prevailed over Egyptian wisdom. It prevailed over people in Canaan, over their wisdom prevailed over their expertise. Mm -hmm. That's the same in salvation. Sins prevailed over all human aptitude. Amen. It's prevailed. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the man who finds out, I'm dry as a gourd. Uh -huh. I'm parched. I don't have any water. I don't have anything to eat. I need, I need something from God. Amen. What are you going to do? I'll give myself to God. Yeah. That's what I'll do. I'll give myself to God. Do what seemeth thee good. Yeah. Maybe you can remember when you did that. I can remember when I did that. Now, uh, 
the earth was made for man, you know. So when man became corrupt, God had to consign the earth and the world to mortality also. See, he had to take the environment. The environment hadn't done anything wrong. In fact, if God called for plenty, the land yielded. God called for a famine, land stopped yielding. So the land and the universe, they had they'd not rebelled against God. But that's where he made this for man. So when man rebelled, well, the parents live in sin. Sometimes the children yes. have to pay the penalty. It's the way it is in the kingdom. Sometimes your friends pay the penalty because you're carnal. You led them astray. They weren't, when they visited with you, come over to your house and you barbecued and all that together. I'm not saying this has happened. This is a hypothesis, you understand? They didn't get the idea you were sold out. They didn't get the idea you were living for God. You were too easily diverted to maybe a ball game. You could step outside the realm of serving God now and then. They picked up on it. Right away they picked up on it. You don't want people to get that idea. When they're around you, they want to get an idea of what it means that a person is sold out for the Lord. So Joseph, you got to sustain the people now. He moved all the people into cities. No more country dwellers, nature worshipers. He moved all the people into cities. The people belonged to Pharaoh and Joseph, so there's a right to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They might, might have had some nice, nice estates out there in the wilderness someplace. No, move them into cities. That's where the corn was stored. You haven't forgot that. That's where the corn was stored was in cities. So I gather there in this vicinity of City A, mm -hmm. they'd move into City A mm -hmm. with the supply for that region. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Very wise, huh? Yeah, amen. Put the corn in the cities first. Uh -huh. First he put the corn in the cities. Then he put the people in the cities. Yeah, right. yeah. First the corn, mm -hmm. then the people. Yeah. First the nourishment, mm -hmm. then the people. You gotta draw people, you gotta draw them with nourishment, uh -huh. mm -hmm. not with programs. Right. You gotta draw them with nourishment. Say there's uh -huh. corn here. Uh -huh. There's spiritual food here in the city. Move into the city. Joseph moved them in and he could manage things better. Right. Better that way. The assemblies of saints are like the cities were to Egypt. Yes. Yeah. They are distribution centers. Yeah, that's what they are. Yeah. Spiritual distribution right. centers. They're not relief centers for the world. There's nothing wrong with that particularly, but it's just, a, just, just not as right as people think. Uh -huh. yeah. It's not right to sustain people's outward life and starve them spiritually. Mm -hmm. What's right about that? Yeah. Amen. Yes. Consider when you said that they moved um, into the city, so to speak, moving closer yeah. to Joseph and how it must have been easier for Joseph to give unto them nourishment when they were closer to him. That's right. But you can definitely see a spiritual parallel there. It's easier for the Lord to give you nourishment and he has more to work with when you're closer to him. Amen. Yeah, amen. That's exactly right. Yeah. It was really it was really right for Joseph to manage them now. Uh -huh. That's right. Yeah. You know, he had he was a, they belonged to him, so he had the right to do it, but it was the best thing yeah. for Joseph to manage them. Yes. Actually they didn't have any way of toting that corn for a year uh -huh. back and forth anyway because he had all the, the horses <laughs> That's and, right. and all the burden carrying beasts. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> and he, he had proved himself to be a merciful man. Uh -huh. yeah. So he had proved he wasn't a harsh. Uh -huh. yeah. He didn't say, well, just go ahead and die. I don't need, you, yeah. you should have thought about this. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. This, this is an efficient thing that Joseph did. By putting people into the cities that the corn was in, yeah. that none be wasted. That's right. So the, the corn would have been no good if it hadn't been consumed and benefited those who ate it. By putting people in the cities that the corn was already in, it was benefiting the people and letting none of it go to waste. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Now there was an exception to all of this. Unlike uh, America, yeah. Egypt respected uh, their religion. To Pharaoh, he uh, he had a special allotment for the priest. I know they were idolatrous priests, but there's a principle here you got to see. Yeah, amen. So he had a special allotment for the priest. They didn't have to sell their land because mm -hmm. they already had food coming in. Yes, yeah. They already had food uh -huh. coming in, uh -huh. yeah. so they need, didn't need to sell their mm -hmm. their land. They were assigned a portion. By Pharaoh. I don't imagine it was meager, but you now it's interesting to observe the the values of the king. Isn't that it's, it, that's an interesting thing, isn't it? Just to observe that. Now, somewhat similar thing existed under the law. Priests, for example, were exempt from taxes, yeah. Jewish taxes. Right. Ezra seven twenty four. And their residence was in the temple of God. They also lived off the tithes of the people. It's interesting that this tells us that this makes more sense even to worldly minded people than people think. Paul said the same principle applied under the gospel. He said, do you not know that they which minister about holy things live with the things of the temple? They which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar. Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live with the gospel. See, so it's the same, same principle. The religion of the people was considered more important than it is in our time. There isn't a value part like this. <clears throat> Joseph gives the people seed. This is the last year of the famine now. People gives the people seed and levies a tax on them. <clears throat> Joseph said unto the people, Behold, I, I bought you this day and your land for Pharaoh. So he, he informed them. We should do the same thing. We should inform the people yeah. in the body of Christ how yes. you've been bought. I don't hear a lot of this being said now. Maybe it is some places, but I don't hear a lot of it being said. Now, you've been bought. You've been purchased. You're not your own. Yeah. Not your own. He told them right up. I bought you for favor. You belong to God now. That's what Jesus did. Jesus purchased the church for God. Then God, in turn, he's going to give the saved to Jesus as a bride. Yes, amen. Amen. <laughs> Now this, uh, when you're nourished by the king, remember we're talking about the Pharaoh nourished the priests, special portion. God, he nourishes his people very, very well. Mm -hmm. Amen. He, he gives life more abundantly. He gives abundance of grace. He gives exceeding abundance, abundant Mercy, a great salvation, yeah. the riches of his goodness and forbearance, riches of his glory, riches of his wisdom and knowledge, riches of his grace, exceeding riches of his grace, unsearchable riches, much more, all things, all spiritual blessings. See, that's what that's been, this is what has been apportioned to us. Yes, we are not on a diet. Yeah. Some Christians are. Uh -huh. They're on a diet. Because diets are for losing weight. Uh -huh. We're not that way. God's provided this abundance. Yes. There's no justifiable reason for any believer to be in living in spiritual squalor. Yeah. That's right. Amen. I know that this a situation exists, but it can't be justified. Some Christians are consistently overcome by temptation all the time. Mm -hmm. They're boohooing all the time because mm -hmm. they made mistakes and failed and all this. There's no justifiable reason for this. God has given too much yes, for this to be true. Mm -hmm. 
It's time for the press professing church to take seriously the great salvation of God. Amen. It ought to immediately refrain from insisting that gospel proclamations be brief and infrequent. The people in the church ought to say, we're not going to settle for this. Yeah. Yeah, amen. Force the closure of all Bible colleges and seminaries that produce uninformed and unsacrificial people. I'm not saying they all do this. I'm saying that what the ones that do should be closed. Give them some work in a farming area or something like that. Old leaven has to be taken out of the church. <clears throat> has to be done. Mm -hmm. See, the modern church, for the most part, is not a city set on a hill that can't be hid. Amen. <clears throat> the church of our day is too easily hidden. Yeah. Actually, it's like a spiritual mole. It's destroying things under underground. Jesus personally said to seriously flawed churches now. Here's what he said. I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of its place except thou repent. Hmm? Repent or else. Yeah. Repent or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Repent yeah. uh -huh. or else. Yeah, that's right. Behold, I'll cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her hmm. in the great tribulation except hmm. they repent of their deeds. See? Yeah. Repent or else. I will kill her children with death, and all her churches shall know that I am he that searches the reins and hearts. I will give unto every one of you according to your works. That's Jesus that said that. Amen. Amen. If thou therefore will not watch, I will come unto thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know in what hour I will come. Then he said to one church, Laodicea, because thou art lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spew thee out of my mouth. You make me sick. That's what he was saying. Amen. Now you judge yourself. How serious are those? How serious is that? But we just heard. How serious is that? This is these things are not considered serious by the nominal church. They don't think it's that serious, but it is. Then Joseph said to him, Lo, here's seed, and I'm going to give you some seed. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sell you this seed. See, you, you've been buying seed from me. Wow. This is the last year of the family. You've been buying the seed from me, and I'm going to, I'm going to give you. Mm -hmm. Because, see, you're working for Pharaoh, and this is a, this is a gift from Pharaoh. Yes, <laughs> see? They sold themselves to Pharaoh. Now Pharaoh, he said, I'll, I'll take care of them. Yes. I'll take care of them. <coughs> Here's some seed, Lord, see, and it's seed for you. This is you. You don't have to distribute this to somebody else. This is seed for you. And and to sow the land. Famine's gonna be over this year, and you want to have a good crop. Yes. The first year after the famine. Yes. So here's some seed now. Here's some seed. You plant it. You might consider that Pharaoh's servants were considered a part of his household. Same with Abraham, his servants were part of his household. Same with Isaac and Jacob, Joseph, their servants were part of the household. We're God's servants, we're part of the household. Amen. This is the man of the kingdom. We are members of the household of God. Ephesians 3, 3.19. And Jesus is managing the household. Mm -hmm. That's Hebrews 3.6. And I'm pointing out, the thing I'm pointing out here is mm -hmm. that under this management, the saints are fit. Yeah. <laughs> if the saints will give themselves to God, if they say, we'll live for you, uh -huh. God will take care of them. Yeah. Amen. If they don't do that, they're on their own. Yes. Amen. That's right. The lesson to be learned from this account is that the more we receive from the Lord, mm -hmm. the more he expects yes. in return. Amen. One text of scripture says he ministers seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Well, here's, 
Here's what he did now. Brother Gavin? Yes. That gives a lot of meaning to the text that says, if we be dead with him, yeah. we shall also live with him. Yes. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, now here's the people. All their money's gone. Mm -hmm. All their cattle's gone. Mm -hmm. They've given up their land, and they're now slaves of Pharaoh. Uh -huh. yes. Now, what's their response going to be? They said, Thou hast saved our lives. Yes, amen. That was their response. Yeah. After losing all that, that was their response. Uh -huh. Thou hast saved our lives. There is thankfulness. Yes. There's a willingness to serve him. Uh -huh. yeah. You saved our lives. It's a small thing that we serve you. Yes, amen. You can see the type. We should have to, have to, have to develop this. There are professing Christians who feel as though God just expects too much of them. They don't see that they've been saved. Because of the magnitude of salvation, the day star hasn't dawned in their heart yet, so they look at their religion as oppressive. Spending a lot of time with God, a lot of time with the things of God is, is like too demanding. See, they're not saying, Thou hast saved our lives. They haven't come to that point. Thou hast saved our lives. But for those that have insight, to see this, to see what Jesus really did, mm -hmm. and see the effect it's had upon God, and see what God has done as a result of it, they say, we say, Thou hast saved our lives. Amen. We're not going to think anything about serving you. We're going to just enter right into the work. Thou hast saved our lives. Why did you save them? So we could serve you. Yes. Amen. We'll, be serv we'll be his servants. Well, that was a. Amen. I hesitate. I'm going to move. I'm going to move on. Now, Joseph, now he's ruler over all the land. He's going to make it a law. He's going to make it a law. They never forget mm -hmm. who they belong to. Hmm? Yeah. They're never going to forget who's bought them. So I made a law in the land of Egypt unto this day. Pharaoh should receive the fifth part, except the land of, of the priests only, which became not Pharaoh's. 20%. That's what he That was a law. 20%. 20. Some people beef around about 10%. Huh? 20. 20%. You know, God, Joseph had a right to do this. God had, Joseph, uh, Pharaoh had set him over all the land of Egypt. So this was his prerogative. In fact, it was like a thanksgiving of himself to Pharaoh for giving him to manage this whole distribution and everything, collection and distribution. Now there's a type here. God the Father has given all authority in heaven and earth to the Son. The kingdom of God has been placed into his hands, the kingdom of his dear Son. The Father honors the Son. All judgments committed to the Son. He's the head over all things. Angels, authorities, and powers have been made subject to him. He's the head of the body, which is the church. Every knee is going to bow to him. All men should honor the Son as they honor the Father. All are saved have been given to him. Now, if God entrusted us to Jesus, it's seriously wrong if we do not do the same as individuals. Say, we, we agree with, the citizens had to say, we agree with what Joseph did. We, we concur. We concur with this judgment. You saved our lives, we'll serve you. Yes. That's kingdom logic. Amen. This is how salvation works. Mm -hmm. You saved me, mm -hmm. I'll serve you. Yep. That's the way it works. Amen. The church says you saved us, we'll serve you. That's the way it works. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pharaoh's going to have to have the fifth part. Yeah. Now, it's similar to the tithe. Tithe God t want 10%, 10th part. 
The tithe was honored by the patriarchs. Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek. Jacob gave a tenth of everything he had to God. So before the law, or before the law, tithing was in force. It was formalized under the law. All the tithes of the land, whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's, is holy unto the Lord. And concerning the tithe of the herd or of the stock, even of whatsoever passeth under the rod, is how many you count? The tenth. The tenth shall be for the Lord. The formalized under the law. It was sanctioned by Jesus. He said to the Pharisees, warned to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These, that's the tithe, you ought to have done. You just did what you should have done. That's right. And not left this love, mercy, and so forth undone. Also, it's declared categorically that presently, he that liveth is receiving tithes. As Hebrews 7, 8, of whom it is witness that he lives. Now he receives tithes, of whom it is witness that he lives. So that's Melchizedek. It is not witness that Melchizedek lives. It says he had no beginning or end, didn't have mother or father, didn't say he's alive. Yeah, uh-huh. It did not. That's right. People that say that, they just simply do not know what they're talking about. This is talking about he, the witness that he lived, the one that God has witnessed is alive is Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's right. I am he that was dead, I'm alive forevermore as witness. Amen. He liveth, he's witness that he lives. Now, if he that is witness that he lives is receiving tithes, somebody's got to be paying them. Amen. Yes. I'll let that go, but every person has to work that out. This is not a popular subject to deal with. I understand that, but I don't care. I don't care. God's spoken on this subject. Before there ever was a law, men knew this. Under the law, men knew this. Jesus upbraided the Pharisees mm-hmm. for their inner manners, but commended them for what they did tithe. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it's, it's witness that the one who is living is receiving tithes. So yeah. there should be no question. Yeah. People that say, the Bible nowhere says we have to tithe. Well, you have to work that out. Because I can't read those texts and say you don't have to tithe. Yeah. I mean, it's... Who gives the the, the, the the money to the Lord has a testimony that God's taking care of him. Yeah. Every single person has done right. it. So obviously he must be receiving it because yeah. he's doing his he's yeah. fulfilling his promise to you that he, the storehouses will be open, right? He, if he said the only place in the scripture he talked like this, he said, Bring ye the tithes into the storehouse and see. Mm-hmm. Prove me. Right. Pro- prove me. Mm-hmm. Now, there's not many places in the scripture that God yeah. says, prove me. Uh-huh. Or put me to the test. Yeah. Off the top of my head, I can't think of any other place. But he said, prove me. If I will not open the windows, that's just a window. Not, yeah. <laughs> I'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Yeah. You won't even be able to receive Amen. it. Amen. Now, that's all I knew on the subject. Yeah. Well, I don't see any alternative to it. Priests did not have to give 20% of their produce because actually their whole life was, that's like the Levites. But they, they even they had to give a tithe. They had to give a tenth of the tenth. <laughs> the, the, the Jewish people gave them a tenth and they had to take a tenth of the tenth and give it to God. Now here's a, a kind of a sticky point with God, but listen to this found in, do I have it here? Oh, I'm sorry, I don't have it here. It's in Exodus, in Leviticus 27. There he says, and if when the animals are passing under the rod, you see when it's, it's a really good animal, you, Take that out. He says, now you got to replace that one and give that one too. Oh. 
It's in that text. I feel to print it out. But ask God for you. So there, brethren, you have uh, a sort of a miniature snapshot of the kingdom of God in this incident. A lot to be seen the way God thinks. And nowhere does it, is it suggested that Joseph was flawed in his thinking on this. And he kept the people alive. He kept the people alive. That's what Jesus is, that's what he's doing in heaven. He's keeping the people alive. And this is so wonderful and so marvelous that the people are constrained to say, I am thine, O Lord. Thou hast heard thy voice. See? That's the response to this. Any of you have a word you'd like to add tonight? Yes, Brother Jason. I, I, I think it's, I noticed an interesting uh, uh, detail there we, we did touch on in that final year he gave them not only the food but the seed yeah. to sow so, so jo joseph was acting now on this revelation god had told him the things only uh -huh. gonna last so long amen amen was, now during a famine it would become very tempting to say oh it's just hopeless mm -hmm. we yeah. don't want to sow yeah. now every time you sow seed you can't eat what you sow Mm -hmm. You've got to sacrifice that food in order to plant it in right. hope <laughs> yes. that the famine's going to end and that you're going to have something to eat. So that was an act of faith. So that's a it's a picture of our hope. Uh -huh. yeah, amen. See, uh -huh. we're saved by hope. Amen. Mm -hmm. That God's going to fulfill His promises. That means that nothing we do for the Lord is wasted. Oh, amen. So yeah. we're, amen. we're in a position where we've been giving we've been given something to sow, mm -hmm. and we sow in hope. And we mm -hmm. so believing that yeah, God's yeah. promises, not one of his promises are going to fall to the ground. Yeah. Yeah. So we sow in hope one day mm -hmm. it says we're going to reap in joy. We may yeah. we may sow in tears. We may, yes. But but we'll we'll reap in joy. Mm -hmm. Bringing our sheaves with us. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yes. I like this point of when the people told Joseph that was saved our lives, even after they lost everything that they owned. When Spiritual life becomes the most important thing. Everything else fades into the background. That's right. And when you when you lose everything but spiritual life, we can still say, God, you have saved our lives. Because he, mm -hmm. he knows better than us yeah. anyway what we need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And by telling us, give us this and I will give you this. Give us, get, I'll give you beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning. Mm -hmm. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Yeah. He knows better than us what we need. And though we, whatever we can lose, whatever we lose in the process, we we can still say you saved our lives. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's a good thought about. <clears throat> now Joseph gave them extra. Yeah. He, yeah. They didn't have to pull out of what they were supposed to eat to sow. Mm -hmm. He gave them extra. This is yeah. for he made a point. Yeah. This is now yeah. for sowing yeah. for later on. But then they got their regular allotment uh -huh. too. And I, I, I say that in the, the spiritual parallel to that too, that God has given us. He gives us the extra abundance. Amen. And you don't want to come up short yeah. on the, you know what happens when you come up yeah. short. You, you can't get any from anybody uh -huh. else. Yes. Because you've been, everybody's been given that extra amount uh -huh. for an investment. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. Actually, you invest that. Mm -hmm. Yes, Emma? Um, I was thinking that people had to keep coming to Joseph for food, and they barely had anything, so they were actually in better hands when they gave themselves to Pharaoh. Yes, yeah. amen, well yeah, said. Right. They were in yeah. better hands. Yeah. <laughs> amen. That's the way it is. Have you noticed that in these accounts, it teaches you how to talk? Yeah, uh-huh. It teaches yeah. you how to express yourself, Brother Dave. This earth, and he, he still is working in this earth and placing people in in a place where they can be saved. Mm. Yes. Amen. 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 <coughs> it's good to actually say those words yeah, okay. to God. Thou hast saved my life. Yeah, actually, yeah. actually, it'll do something for your soul. Yeah, yeah. It, it'll it'll enliven your soul. Just say it to God. Y'all save my soul. When God was judging the gods of Egypt, too. yes, because these Egyptians, when things like this came up, they were used to going to their what they considered to be their gods for help, but their gods were silent; they couldn't help, and so they 
this was a judgment from God to show that they're, that they're, what, what they had been worshiping as God was really not a God. And so this, this also compounds the sin of a Pharaoh arising later that didn't remember Joseph. That's right. That they had a testimony in Joseph's day that those gods that they served were false, and yet they still went back to them. Mm-hmm. Billy Matthew. Yeah, I was thinking about this seed as well and the, the, na- the abundant nature of the kingdom. Is that we didn't just receive enough to, to not die. You know, and, and, and in the increase, that was that was for Pharaoh. And so for, for us, we've been given enough that we can bring forth fruits to God. Amen. That's good. Amen. 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 Yes. Three things I wanted to share. Uh, first, on the, the abundance of what Joseph had stored up, we know that things got very bad because the people lost all their money, then they lost their cattle, and then they lost their land, and finally they get, they sold themselves mm-hmm. into slavery to Pharaoh. So that things got really bad. But Joseph never one time said, sorry, there's no food left. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. always an abundance. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. The food supply never ran out. Yeah. Amen. And then the, uh, the gratitude of the people, no one complained and said that's not fair you took advantage of us uh-huh. or something of that nature they they realized what was at stake which was the the entire nation mm-hmm. if they if they didn't give themselves to Joseph the entire nation would have perished mm-hmm. and they they saw that and they were grateful for it yeah they, mm-hmm. they didn't complain about it and then your your comment about uh, Joseph this was a an act of Joseph's gratitude for Pharaoh also, and I thought how Pharaoh brought Joseph up out of prison. Mm-hmm. Well, this is this is what the father did for the son. <coughs> yeah. Brought him up out of the grave. Yeah, that's right. And so, so this is what Jesus is doing is in gratitude to God for that. Amen. Amen. And also, when you do give all these things up to God, you give yourself. He he get, lets you use all this anyway. That's I mean, right. you still get mm-hmm. use of it. They still got use of all the things mm-hmm. that were given because uh-huh. they were in the cities and they got to use them. Uh, I'm sure they used the animals and things there yeah. because they had to do something while they were there. They didn't <laughs> just stand around and eat. Uh-huh. So um, they got yeah. use of, of yeah. all the things that they had Yeah. as well. Amen. Amen. I was thinking of the same thing, kind of. the um, now, J- Joseph, he's, he's wise, so he... He, he gets all these cattle and he preserves them alive. Now, they're going to need these later when they go yeah. to sow. Yeah. They're going to have to have this, yeah. but if they had all died, how are they yeah. going to sow? How are they going to yeah. give it? So, the, when, when he gives them the seed, obviously, we've been given all things that pertain yes. to life and godliness. So, everything that we need to be godly and to develop or mature in Christ has been given to us. Amen. But we have to be employed in it. Yes. We Amen. have to actually take the stuff and do something with Amen. it. And God gives us grace to do that. Mm-hmm. And so it, it's all pictured in this. It's a marvelous sex. They yeah. used Pharaoh's cap. Yes. <laughs> you brought this out. Actually, though, Joseph was smart in, in gathering up all the cattle yeah. and the horses yes. because he really couldn't. He really could, it was at a point where he couldn't really rely on the people to take care of these yeah, animals anymore. Right. They might have been foolish about neglect and maybe trying to do other things. With so he, the best thing to do is just let's get all the gather all these animals <laughs> right. up so yeah. we'll have and them. Pharaoh He's took, thinking about this fam is going to be yeah, over. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. And Pharaoh took good care of all yes. of his cattle. Amen. <clears throat> so now when the time comes when the Israelites <laughs> need cattle, Pharaoh says, "You can use my cattle." Yeah. 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 That's the way it is with us. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's the way it is with us. Yeah. When you get something you're using for God, God gave you what. Something he has, he gave to you yes. to Amen. use. That's right. Amen. Amen. Kind of reissue. Reissue. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. All right, we'll have a word of prayer. God, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the record of Joseph and for Joseph himself. He is a noble representative of our race, and we honor him before you knowing that you are the reason why he was such a noble soul. We thank you for him, and we ask, Lord, that in our generation, (coughs) 
you would raise up spiritually noble people who will know what the church should do. It's pray in Jesus' name. Amen.